Good morning! This is part 1 of learning color spaces in Unreal Engine 5. In this third chapter, we will discuss the tone mapper and why it's so important to turn the tone mapper off when you're rendering your final images. In the second chapter, we will discuss the ACES workflow and how you can maximize your images' full potential and make sure that your images are future-proof. So here we are in Unreal Engine. This is just a sample scene I've downloaded from the marketplace and I'll link it down below if you want to have a look at it. So here I've placed a random spotlight and the purpose of this light is to show you the purpose of why you should turn off the tool mapper when doing your final renders. So this light is extremely bright to make sure that we overexpose the camera. Other than that, the settings for the camera aren't really important. So we'll jump into the camera view and this is what our image looks like. So we'll head up to Cinematics and then Movie Render Queue. We'll add our sequence and head into the settings. Here we'll disable the JPEG and I'll just add some anti-aliasing. You can type in whatever you want here. Now, you probably heard about the benefits of using the EXR file format and the many benefits that that comes with. However, I think most people miss a very important step here, and that is to turn off the tone mapper. So you're probably wondering what the tone mapper is. The way to look at the tone mapper, it's kind of a LUT or a preset gamma curve that makes sure your image looks very nice, but it does compress the gamma curve, so you can't really modify it uh, in post. So, for example, if you've overexposed or underexposed your image, there's really no way of getting that information back. And before hitting accept, we will change the uh, output directory. And we'll place this render in just a version 1 folder here. For the output resolution, I will match the camera settings, which is 4096 by 1706 which is the uh, 239 uh, CinemaScope aspect ratio. I'll change this to 25 FPS. I'll just render one second here and then hit render. So up to this point, you don't have to follow along with anything. Just I'm going to show you why you want to turn off the tone mapper. So even though the render looks good, we'll bring this into DaVinci and we'll have a look at the render. So one thing to note is that when you render an EXR from Unreal Engine, you render it in a linear gamma curve within the Rec. 709 color space. So when you bring this EXR into DaVinci, you will see that the image looks different from what it did in Unreal. And that is because the viewport applies the tone mapper. So the first step is to convert the gamma curve uh, back from linear to uh, Rec. 709. So in the effect panel here, we'll search for space. And here you will find the color space transform. And this is where we'll transform from linear back to uh, a Rec. 709 gamma curve. And now you will see that the image looks exactly the way it did in Unreal Engine. So now that we have everything set up, it's time for me to demonstrate to you guys why you want to turn off the tone mapper before doing a render in Unreal. So we'll create a new node by hitting Shift S. This will create a color node before the one that is active in the node graph. That way we have the color space transform at the end which is very important and something that we always want to do. And on this node, we'll try to recover the highlights of the uh, spotlight. So as you can see, it's completely blown out. It's super white down at the lake. And if we bring down the gain, even though we're doing it before the color space transform, there's no way to recover that information. That information is just simply gone and can't be recovered. This is because the gamma curve was compressed with the tone mapper and it completely obliterates any information that was present in the image before. So we can change the waveform over here to the right and have a look at the image. As you can see when we bring down the highlights it's just clipped. There's no information uh, above this line. There's no way we're getting back the color information that was uh, present here. So we're back in Unreal and for this render I will show you the benefits of turning the tone mapper off and under setting, apply the color output. Here you will disable the tone curve. 
we'll add a new folder called version 2. Select this one and then hit render. And just a small performance trick will also change to unlit mode. That will make sure that the render process is just a bit quicker. As you can see in the preview window, we now have a linear gamma curve, and it does look kind of strange. We'll fix that in DaVinci Resolve. Perfect, so now we have our second render. We'll drag this down into the timeline here, and then go into the color panel. And now you can see that we have our information back in the highlights here. It does look really strange, and that is because it's viewed in a linear gamma curve. So, just as before, we'll apply a color space transform. And here we'll once again choose the input color space to a Rec 709 color space. The input gamma is linear, if you remember. And the output color space and gamma curve actually is Rec 709 by default in DaVinci Resolve. So, you don't have to select that in the drop down list here, it's already on by default. So, let's try once again. Then we'll bring down the highlights. And like magic, we can recover the highlights here. And the reason that we can do that is because we haven't compressed the gamma curve. We still have all that information from 0 to 1 in the luminance spectrum. So even though perhaps your render was overexposed or you had a window in the back that was completely blown out in the viewport, you can still recover this information if you turn off the tone mapper and render in the EXR file format. This is because EXRs are linear, and you can't do this if you render a JPEG or a PNG, for example, because those have a compressed gamma curve. In the second chapter, we will discuss the ACES workflow and how you can really maximize the full potential of your images, making sure that they're both future-proof and also look the correct way, regardless of which platform you choose to view them. And as always, if you have questions, leave them down below in the comments, and I will try to answer them as quickly as I can. So until next time, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.